we're now going to do um, a proof by contraposition. And first, let us just explain a little bit about the logic here. So if I want to prove that a statement A implies some other statement B, then the rules of logic tell me that, tells me that it's, it's actually equivalent to establish that not B, so the logical negation or logical opposite of B, implies the logical uh, opposite of A. So these two things are the same. And let's just look at this from like a common sense perspective. So if I say Joe is in Lund, so that's my statement A, and then we want to show that this implies Joe is in Sweden. So Sweden, Lund is a town in Sweden. And logically, this is the same as saying that Joe, or proving that Joe is not in Sweden, implies Joe is not in Lund. So these two statements are logically exactly the same. So if we look at a map, we can maybe make sense of this. So let's say that Sweden looks like this, and then Lund is somewhere here. So in the first one, we're saying we have to prove that if you're inside of this dot, then you're inside of Sweden. Okay. And the second one says that we have to prove that if you're not inside of Sweden, then this implies that you're not in this dot. So you can see, if you think of this in terms of, of um, set theory, in terms of sets, it kind of makes sense that these two statements are logically the same. But we're not going to go too deeply into logic in this course, so let's, we keep the logic at that level. But let's now look at a more concrete example. The example is, so to prove that a times b is zero implies a is zero or b is zero. So if I want to prove this, then by what I said, I can instead look at this. So that would mean that it's the same to look at not a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero implies a b is not zero, which we, which we can immediately just write like this. And when you're doing this contraposition business, it can be a bit of a, you have to be careful that you correctly identify what the logical negation is. So the logical negation of A is zero or B zero is the statement that describes exactly what it means for this to be false. Well, for A to be zero or B to be zero to be false, then you need both of them to be non-zero. So this thing here. And it's a common feature when you do negations that ors turns in, turn into ands and that ands turns into ors. So that's kind of a rule of thumb you can use. Right. And we're actually not going to, to give the proof here. So that's, that's an exercise. And it's a bit silly because this proof by um, contraposition uh, is logically uh, closely connected to proofs by contradiction. And to prove this, well, at least what I would do is do a proof by contradiction. So that's almost as if you didn't do anything at all. But hey, you can try it out.